Hello everybody, welcome back to today's video and on today's lesson we are just going to look at what is Fluent Interface Design. This is one of the design patterns you will find very cool and I would like you to check it out and hopefully this introduction will give you an idea. So this design includes methods they could be chained together using one object. Methods can be called using one object together. And we're going to do a simple Java example for this one. And let's take a look at the rules. Type of the methods are the same name with the class name. So instead of we are going to say public string, we're going to say public class name. And then multiple methods will be called using this same object. We can do this. Methods should have a return and should include return this. That means that objects, so let's type it here. Let's say methods do not need a return. Actually the point of return this so we can chain the next method. All right. And under tests I'm going to add a new class and let's name it chain example. All right inside our chain example class We can do our simple example. Let's add a node here. Let's create a person information. Like a person can have name, age, let's say occupation, and Let's put one more, say salary. And let's also put the type of each. Obviously, a name is a string. Age is integer. Occupation is string. So I'm just putting str. And salary is, let's do a double. All right. Next. Let's add these variables. And since I have two string, I can just put them together with a comma. All right. Next up, once we have these, we can say optionally you can make them private or whatever access modifier you want to use. Let's make them private. So it's going to give you an idea of using setters. All right. So now there is a need for setters and getters. Okay, good. So let's put here setters and getters. And I'm optionally going to get one, one method and for all four variables set four methods. Now let's start. The first one let's type public 
And then remember, we would do void or string. Instead of this one, we're going to say class name, remember? Chain example. And we're just going to say, this is going to be how I want to chain. So we can say the name of our method. Let's say set name. And then evidently it's a return type. Look at our rule on the right. We have to use return this. And let's do return this to make it happy. And now, since this is a setter, we can say this name is actually the name I'm passing. We initialize it. Now, we're going to use a similar setup for the rest of the setters. So let me do them in the order. Let's say chain example. And we always use the same logic because we're chaining them. You need to always mention the class name. Now you see, I am missing something and I'll tell you what. This, this name that I use, or this occupation, or this age, this is self-calling itself, which is not cool. So we have to pass our parameter right here. So this is going to be string name. So now you can see this name is right where it's supposed to be. Same here. We're going to say string occupation. Now it's happy. And we need to make age also happy. So we're going to say int age. And then one other thing we want to do here is return this. What does return this do? It returns us back to the class object. So now, if my class object that I created, I can call rest of the other chain methods. So you will see this idea. Just a moment. You're almost finished. And we have our last example, which is salary. Let's set that one. And we can say return this. But we're also going to pass double salary. All right. Our setters are done for variables then. Now we also need a getter. What is this one? Get the person information. Let's say public. Again, I'm going to change this one as well. So let's say get info, something like that. You can name anything. Wait a second. When I do chain it, I should not have something to return. So it has to be either something set or 
something, it can return some calculation or so, some sorts, which is why you can still call this without having to chain it. And I'll show you how. So let's make it void. We just don't want to return anything. All we want is to print out person information. Just like name. Let's say name equals name. And let's go to next line. Let's repeat. Let's say age equals age. Similarly, let's go to next line. Let's get occupation. That equals occupation. And then let's put the last one and salary. Salary equals salary. All right, this is just like a two string method. But this is our void type, and I'll tell you why I make it void. Now, finally, let's add our main method. Let's add it to the top. So far, you see our chain example set name that returned this. So we are backing to the object. And uh, set occupation also returning this. So back up to the object. Chain example that is also returning this. That means you're back to the object. So you can call set salary in the order or a different order. It doesn't really matter. It's just how you put them in the order in your sysout, in your statement. All right, let's uh, check out the usage. And let's add our main method. And let's make a person object from chain example. And this is a type coupling, and you should know about the type coupling difference between loose coupling. Or drop your questions in the comments, and I'll help you how you can figure this out. Okay. Now I can all I can say is call my object. Remember, one object is going to be fair enough to reach out to all methods so let's set the name let's say we have okay and then i can chain like this in the order or you can just go right here and you can put dot right here it's the same thing whether you put here or there or any other white space and now Let's set age, say 20. And then let's go and set occupation. Let's say front end developer. And then lastly, set salary. Let's say 120. We 
you can put any random number. And then now I chained all my methods together. So this is simple example uh, of the Fluent interface design. So this is how you set up your interface design uh, chaining your methods. Usually that take into account of some little advanced stuff that I can show you later. But right now, just the most simplistic way you can do is this. And then finally, I can also chain, because this is my object, I can reach out to my void type as well. And that's going to print my statement. And that's all. Now get info is going to print out all this information. We have 20 front-end developer and 20k salary. And let's test it. All right, name is we have age is 20, occupation front end developer salary is 120. Okay, now hopefully you got the simple idea of how to chain multiple methods. All you have to do, change your type from void or other string or other integer or all other types into class type. So this class type will allow you to chain them up. And so you could just use one object to reach out to all of the available methods. And that will be all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this gave you an idea. Until next time. Thanks for watching.